Grant et al. 1998. Context-dependent memory. Background. What is context-dependent memory? In the mid-1970s and the early 80s, a number of research studies were carried out to investigate the effects that people's environment can have on their memory. Context-dependent memory is a phenomenon that occurs when individuals have better performance on a memory test when the test occurs in the same environment in which the remembered material was originally studied. For example, if you were to study for an exam while listening to music, then according to the theory of context-dependent memory, you will perform better in an exam if you were listening to music while taking your exam. AIM The study conducted by Grant et al. was interested in finding out whether context-dependent memory could be found in a school setting, and more specifically, whether people who listened to background noise while studying for a test would perform differently on the test compared to people who studied with no background noise. Sample The participants in the study were recruited via a snowball sample, whereby each of the experimenters recruited five acquaintances each to take part. There were 39 participants in total, although 40 had originally taken part, with one of the participants being excluded because their results were a significant outlier and would have skewed the data. Those taking part in the study consisted of 17 females and 23 males, with a mean age of 23.4 years old. Methodology The study was conducted as a laboratory experiment with an independent measures design. There were two variables. Participants who were in a silent reading condition, who were then tested in either silent testing condition or a noisy testing condition, and participants who were in a noisy reading condition, who were tested in either a silent or noisy testing condition. There were three dependent variables that the researchers measured. Reading time, which was used as a control, performance on a multiple choice test, and performance on a short answer test. Procedure. Participants were asked to read an article through one time as if they were reading it for a class assignment. They were allowed to highlight and underline as they read. Participants were informed that their comprehension would be tested, with both a short answer test and a multiple choice test. The topic of the article was about psychoimmunology, and the participants' reading time was recorded by the experimenter. All participants wore headphones while they read. Participants in the silent condition were told that they would not hear anything over the headphones, and participants in the noisy condition were told that they would hear moderately loud background noise over the headphones, but that they should ignore it. The background noise used for the noisy condition consisted of an audio recording of a university cafeteria at lunchtime. A break of approximately two minutes between the end of the study phase and the beginning of the test phase was incorporated to help minimise any recall from short-term memory. The short answer test was given first and was followed by the multiple choice test. Participants were tested in either silent or noisy conditions and were informed of the condition before testing began. And regardless of testing conditions, all participants wore headphones. At the end of testing, participants were debriefed about the purpose of the experiment. The entire procedure lasted around 30 minutes. Results. The results showed that participants in all conditions spent roughly the same amount of time reading through the articles although there was a considerable amount of individual variability between participants. Therefore, the researchers decided to use reading time as a covariate in the analysis of test performance. The data from one person in the silent study silent test condition was omitted from the analysis because their performance was over 2.5 standard deviations below the combined group mean on each test. For both the short answer and multiple choice tests, the results showed a reliable interaction between study condition and testing condition. It was found that there was a significant effect of studying and testing within matching conditions compared to mismatching conditions. The results showed that there are context dependency effects for newly learned meaningful material regardless of whether a short answer test or a multiple choice test is used. For both types of tests, studying and testing in the same environment, the matching conditions, was found to be more beneficial. The results also suggested that there was no overall effect on performance between the matching conditions. In other words, the results weren't influenced by whether participants studied in a silent or noisy environment, but rather whether they tested in the same environment that they studied in. Conclusions The results provided further evidence that context-dependent memory exists for newly learned information. The researchers suggested that an implication of this for students is that because real-life tests in academic settings are usually conducted in a quiet environment. They are more likely to perform better on exams if they study for them with minimum background noise.
Furthermore, the fact that evidence for context-dependent memory was found, regardless of whether a short answer test or multiple choice test was used to assess learning, suggests that the phenomena can occur with different types of testing and examination. Evaluations. The research carried out by Grant et al. was a laboratory experiment, so the participants knew that they were being studied. The experiment had a high standardised procedure, with equal numbers of participants in each condition, and many variables controlled for to minimise any extraneous variables. This meant that the study was high in internal validity, and also that it would be easy for other researchers to easily replicate the procedure. However, the fact that it was a laboratory experiment meant that it was relatively low in ecological validity, since normal life is rarely as controlled as a laboratory setting. For example, the participants in the silent condition had to wear headphones, despite there not being any sound playing, which arguably doesn't happen much in real life. The study collected quantitative data in the form of participant scores on the short answer test, multiple choice test, and reading time. This meant that the results could be easily compared and enabled researchers to make conclusions about the statistical significance of the data. The sample of participants was obtained via a snowball sampling, whereby the eight experimenters each recruited five acquaintances each to take part in the study. This was a quick and cost-effective method of obtaining a sample, although arguably this also means that it wasn't very representative of the general population, since many of the participants were university students. We therefore have to be careful about generalising the results to the population. For example, it's also possible that students are more used to learning information quickly than the general population. The participants used in the study were all volunteers and provided informed consent to take part in the study. And although they were not initially told the true nature of the research being undertaken, all participants were fully debriefed afterwards by the experimenters. So overall, the study had high ethical standards.